exhibition of Trina Sharp Hyman. We have portraits and we have examples of her beautiful illustrations in this exhibition. This show has been on for a while. Um, I think it would, does anyone know when it closes? Pretty soon. February 1st. February 1st, you have time to come and see this show still. Uh, this is a self-portrait of the artist done uh, in what year does that say? 2002. 2002. Trina's da uh, daughter, Katrin, um, helped organize this exhibition and we're all really, really grateful. Someone just told me that this has been the most popular show at Avith. Many, many people coming in. I've been here a while today and there really has been a stream of interested people. And this is a friend who knew Trina well, so I'm going to let you speak a little bit about your connection as a painter and a friend. Um, this is Meg McLean, a painter from Lyme. Gosh, where can I start? Um, I met Trina when I moved here from the Midwest in the early, I guess the late 80s. And I'd known her work for years since I was about 12 and loved her illustrations. And then I had the good luck to um, paint with her in a studio up in Bradford. And that went on for, I don't know, four or five years maybe. And then we continued being friends after that. But, um, she was a, certainly an inspiration all those years before I met her. And it was just a real honor to paint with her. Well, and I assume you know so many people who are in this show, because a lot of them were people she painted with. Yes, yes. Well, let's move on and look at some more of these portraits. This is Katrin, Trina's daughter, and Gun, who's visiting from Sweden. And I understand she just got in last night. So I'm really glad you're here to be in the presence of these three portraits done earlier by Trina. Do you, do you want to discuss the paintings so, at all? And tell more about Maybe things. when they were and about uh, Gun? So this is Gun. She was my she was my nanny when I was a little girl, and um, that painting of her was painted when she I was very little girl, and she was seventeen. How old were you? Yeah, seventeen. Um, and when we lived in New York, and then we didn't see Gun again for a long time until um, two, 19, 1993. She came to visit us in New Hampshire and, and that, at that time that's when that portrait of her was painted and then in 2000 she also came here because my mother was sick she, um, that was the first time she had breast cancer and Gun came to, to be with her when she was having chemotherapy so and here she is again and oh, it's that was in Swedish what was it like? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful to see you with these images. Uh -huh. One of the exceptional things about this exhibition uh -huh. was that at the opening, mm -hmm. just like we're standing here with Gun and seeing her image mm -hmm. done lovingly by Trina, that many of the people who are in these paintings were here. So when I came, you could walk up and you look around and you'd think, oh. And even though it was sometime 15 years later, she captured the personalities and the essence of these people in a beautiful way, and you'd know who they were immediately. Hmm. So that was great fun. This is a wall that includes some more pictures of Trina's family, and we have Katrin here and her son, Mishu. And I don't know what years those were, but these are beautiful paintings. Do you remember posing for that? Um, I, I don't know when it was, but I remember posing for it. Um, and I was falling, it's really quite difficult posing because you have to stay still for hours. And I remember I kept falling asleep over the book, which was irritating for the people who were painting me. I remember. Yeah, and Michael, oh, Michael was too. also, Michael was there too. I remember you were there and he was painting. So this was well, part so. of the art group that uh -huh. used to get together and paint as right, a group. Right, yeah. You want to tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that? What those years were like? with? Well, Trina actually painted with a number of groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, with Meg um, and Bert Dodson and uh, Judith Lerner. Mm -hmm. And um, then we painted just she and I in her studio for a couple of years. And then we went mm -hmm. back up to Bert's studio in Bradford and mm -hmm. then moved to a funky little building with a jeweler and a, a collagist muralist, Carol's mm -hmm. 
object uh, installation art stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she worked with lots, many different groups of people. And it was fabulous, <laughs> it was mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, it's an interesting mm -hmm. show because we see this work that took place with models in, in a community of artists. And later on in this um, interview, we'll take a look at her illustrations, which is, of course, what people in the rest of the world know her for. Mm -hmm. But we're lucky to see this intimate side of her work, I think, and to get a glimpse of the community she lived in. Mm -hmm. And before we move on, I want to say this is a beautiful painting. And how old was he then? This is a painting of my son. And I think he, I believe he was 10 when that was painted. I think it's a beautiful painting, too. Does he really. still seem like that somehow to you? Um, in some ways. I think mm -hmm. um, he, it's, it's a little bit of a sad painting, but he's a beautiful person, and he still is. The light's hitting it beautifully right now in the gallery, mm -hmm. so I hope that comes across mm -hmm. in the image as mm -hmm. it's um, mm -hmm. sent out to you all on television mm -hmm. or on the computer. Let's mm -hmm. move on to this portrait next there. Do you want to walk over there towards that portrait? <laughs> I understand this is your father. This is my father. He, he posed for us. And I'm, Trina and my father were neighbors for years and years. And um, there, it was a rocky relationship, I think. They had a lot of fun. Trina and your but dad. Trina and my dad. Yeah. Through the, the four weeks that he posed for us, Trina and he did not shut up the entire time. <laughs> right. It was very stressful for me to be, to be in the in situation. situation. They had a wonderful time. but. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a terrific portrait. It is my father. It is. A, it, it is. is my it's, father. It's it is. A, yeah. Well, I, I, this look that on her is, face, almost a little bit of a um, questioning. Yeah, is that so kind of look? Uh -huh. It's very interesting uh -huh. when you said what you did about the relationship. <laughs> and she's got something very particular in this person, and how she saw him. And I think that's true of this whole show. So let's move on to the next gallery, where there are a couple of pictures of Michael. This is the painting of Michael painting. And it's, um, what's the date, Michael? Can you see? Um, around one, one, 2001 to four. That's right. it was, uh, Not that long uh, ago. Uh, it's an interesting painting. Did, did you ever do one of her? Yes, oh yes. Oh, that would be fun to see. Mm -hmm. Did everybody paint each other? Did you have a lot of This was, well, actually, through the years, yes. If we couldn't get engage a model, a model we would or do a still life or self-portraits or, or take turns. I mean, the, the other painting is I was, paint, was posing for Trina and Bert. Oh, and that's a really posed painting. I love it. Oh, it's We'll true. get to that. But not <laughs> this painting, I think, is, um, gives a kind of sense of how the painter, you know, really intently looks at the model. I like that very much. This painting was done actually in one session. It looks it. It's, yeah, it we, has a freshness and a vigorousness of, of just getting it done. It, but she, the, it was amazing that how Trina could yeah. go straight to the core, get the details that are, are the most important. And, yeah. and who cares? Yeah, what? And the environment. Well, the one beneath you, I know, is the daughter of the artist we began this interview with, Meg McLean. And I saw this at the opening, and I was totally tickled with it. And I must say, it's not like any other painting here. It has a different... Um, it has Barbie. Yeah, I see yeah. there's Barbie, but the little daughter is sort of Barbie too. <laughs> right. Do you remember the story? Oh, sure. She was six, I think. And um, they said it was Bert and Trina. And, oh, and Michael. And Sorry, and Michael. Yes, you're right. So we said, <laughs> wear whatever you want. And she came down, I don't know what time of year it was, wearing this. So we walked through the streets of Bradford like this, like we were coming from, you know, showgirl time. And she had her my size Barbie with her, which she dragged around, you know, which looked like a mannequin. And Trina, she didn't want to sit very long. She was on a stool, which wasn't very comfortable. So I think Trina whipped that off in about 45 minutes, right? She only, um, she did a really nice likeness of Barbie, I think. She <laughs> captured Barbie <laughs> very well. But, but you can tell that Emma was, was, you know, after 10 minutes, she'd had it. <laughs> but the costume's so wonderful. Yeah. And I love the juxtaposition with all the sort of what I would call grown-ups in these pictures. Yeah. And it's delightful. Yeah. Well, speaking of children, if we move over two paintings, there's another picture of uh, Katrin with another son. 
So this is a picture that I took with my son Xavier um, when I think Xavier was about eight and he is, he, he's older now and he does just fine, but as a child he had a really hard time sitting still. Um, so this was just a nightmare <laughs> <laughs> to paint and I, I we kept, he, they, they would, um, they paid their models eight dollars an hour? Is that right? Ten, but we didn't it was pay ten dollars an hour, did we? Oh yeah, you did, because we kept talking. I mean, we told him ten dollars an hour, Xavier. You can do it for five more minutes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Ten dollars. I, I was sitting there whispering, ten dollars an hour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that explains that expression. I know. <laughs> and it was just excruciating. I know, and it. I, I don't think. I think we sat for maybe. Two hours tops. Tops. Yeah, I in, mean, in with a lot of breaks. With a lot of yeah. breaks. Yeah, yes. yeah. So she did pretty well. I remember the rest of the painters in the group. N didn't, nobody, didn't nobody got anything out of this. Mm -hmm. Well, so, what is extraordinary yeah. is her facility. Uh -huh. I mean, she obviously right. knew this child too. And oh yeah. Knew and loved <laughs> you, and so she could. Uh -huh. She could be blunt. She could show yes. that attitude. It's, a, it's quite a wonderful piece, uh -huh. a quick sketch of life. Oh, I appreciate mm -hmm. the expression of weariness on my face. <laughs> yes, I see that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not idealized. Uh -huh. Right. Ooh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's nice that, he, that, that we have it. Do they appreciate these paintings now? Do you see? Oh, yeah. The kids really love seeing them. These will yeah. be treasures. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So let's move on uh -huh. and see that other picture of Michael. I, as I said earlier, posed for Trina and Bert um, when, when we couldn't get another model. And uh, they both did very intense portraits. Um, they got a slightly crazy side, each of them a different crazy side. And I just have to say, being a painter and posing for fellow painters is a very difficult thing because I know exactly what it's like if, you're, if your eyes twitch or if your mouth lags, or if your head twists a little, or the hand is not quite in the right place. And I also know that it sucks when the timer goes off. It's, it's the end, <laughs> and, and I'm, just, I'm just about there. So I would just sit there for hours. And you could do it. And I could do it, and it, it well, was, was a gift but it was really eye hard. Eye. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a very um, finished painting compared to what we just looked at, the quick sketches, I think. And it's interesting to look at things like the light and so on on this painting. Mm -hmm. So it's not just gestural. Very interesting. And I think the pose is rather dramatic but peaceful personality that comes out is really nice. Well, it was completely staged. I know. I was so. dressed. Trina did my makeup and I was put in this position. <laughs> but it's a great idea. Yes, it's true. It's because, true. I mean, art is artifice sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of delightful. And if you think about her as an illustrator, it would make sense that costuming people or occasionally playing a little role would make sense. Right, uh, right. And it's actually not something she did m much in this body of work that you'll see. Well, the maybe still with lives. this one beside you. I don't know who this he is. Had Larry Howard. He showed oh, up with, he he's a... Um, he's a reenactor. Which war? The, I've forgotten which war. That's terrible of me, but this was his reenact, reenactment costume mm -hmm. and accoutrement. Well, it's good they were together because these are the, I guess they are, well, no, that's not true. Barbie one is pretty that's true. much decorated <laughs> person too. Another whole less represented part of Trina's painting, it was less often still lives that, that we, she would mostly set up um, as painting challenges for all of us and uh, they were always challenges. They were always great to visually exciting but then packed with all of those wonderful booby traps <laughs> and those back uh, hairpin turns where you have no how do you paint through a, a slightly green tint bottle how, how do you paint the fabric pattern and the back side of that silver tray it's just this this works really beautifully try it at home <laughs> it's really it's Hard. For anyone who's interested in Trina Schartheimann and her work and her, the body of work of her lifetime, this is really a good opportunity to come see it because I don't think that all of these paintings will ever be together, be shown together again. Um, so I do encourage you to come see it. 
It's a, an, an incredibly rare opportunity that it, um, I hope everybody, everybody gets to be as inspired by these paintings as mm. I am, we are. Thank you, Ava, for hanging the show. Yeah, thank, thank you, Catherine, for making the show happen. Yeah, thank really. you guys for making it happen, too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're glad, we're, we're, we're very happy to have, be able to see this all together. It's really mm -hmm. been a treat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And thank you. And thank you, yes. <laughs> well, Trina was first and foremost known as a children's book illustrator. She has illustrated uh, around 150 children's books. So when we decided to do this exhibition here at Eva Gallery and Art Center, uh, we felt it would be an excellent introduction to this amazing collection of paintings to start out with a few examples from some of her books. In particular, we were very fortunate <clears throat> that her daughter, Catherine, was willing to lend the original works for Trina's last book. Um, it is called Changing Woman and Her Sisters. And it is stories of goddesses from around the world. Um, Trina started working on this in the winter of 2004. She died in November 2004. So this was actually among the last, very last works that, that she did. And as a matter of fact, the book was not uh, published until 2006. So it is, it is very meaningful to have it here on display. Um, and additionally, what makes this, uh, these illustrations so particularly interesting is that she ventured into a medium she had never worked with before, namely collage. These illustrations are combinations of paintings and amazingly beautiful, beautifully executed collages. There are, um, she pulled wool from her sheep and made a kind of a halo on the introductory page of, of the, the, what is she called? The changing woman, the Navajo deity, as you can see here. She put rope in here for the news of the Durga, the warrior goddess. Here with the moon goddess, added using cheesecloth to create the uh, veil on the moon goddess, um, cut out from photographs and everything is just beautifully, beautifully collaged. And it is amazing, I mean, uh, it is so remarkable to look at these illustrations because at the time when she was working on that, she was very sick and she had problems with a tumor that was pressing on her optical nerve. So at times she had double vision and she had pain and yet with her extraordinary determination she finished uh, these works and I mean I, I am so impressed the collage, the, the, the quality of these collages are, are so, uh, is so high and it, it's just beautifully done. The book I think has come out, turned out extremely successfully. And one thing that strikes me looking at these uh, illustrations is she knew so well how to work, um, to how her illustrations would, would just suit the page. It is amazing. To me, even though I love work, uh, looking at the original, it's almost more satisfying to look at a book just because she knew, she understood so well um, how to, to uh, scale her work to fit the page of the book. And that is uh, so, so amazing. It is also a collaboration, of course, with, with her daughter, Catherine, who wrote, uh, wrote the story. So that makes this book very meaningful too. In addition, we have two of the original works from one of her most beloved book, Little Red Riding Hood. So uh, uh, most people in, here in the community are probably familiar with that. But this is the one that is really the, uh, new to us all and uh, brings her work together in a remarkable, uh, you know, pulls from all of her experiences in her distinguished career pulls it beautifully together. The, the wall where the illustrations for um, Changing Woman and Her Sisters is displayed starts out with a cover image for the book. 
um, an image of Ostara, the goddess of light, spring and rebirth. And that is inspired uh, by a work that Trina did while she was still in high school in the 1950s so, with the same setup of the goddess here in the middle, the light falling on her and the people all around here in the wintry forest. Um, in addition, we have a beautiful write-up um, made by or written by Steve Gordon who had the opportunity to visit with Trina often during um, the winter and spring of 2004. Um, and uh, we have copies of his write-up here uh, for people to bring along. And I, I hope that as many as possible can come and see the exhibition in the last week that it is on display here. Eva is open from 11 to 5 on weekdays. And on Sunday, February 1st, from 2 to 4, there will be a gathering here with a tribute to Trina. So, um, and if you have, a, we are willing to open up at other times too, if, you, if it is impossible for you to come within the hours, just give Eva a call at 603-448-3117, and we will, um, we will open up for you. It is an exhibition that should not be missed.